as soon as I heard of the fixture, a Nintendo Switch mount that clips onto a Pro Controller, I wanted one. It upgrades your handheld experience by letting you use a proper full-size controller instead of the Joy-Con. This is a brilliant idea and will solve comfort problems for many people, but the price is a little steep. In the UK, the S1 is priced just under £50 on Amazon or $40 on the official site. The S2, or Switch OLED version, is available only as a bundle on Amazon UK for £55. It's $45 for the mount on the official site and $65 for the bundle, and that's not including international shipping. I love playing in handheld, so I don't have a Pro Controller, which would mean an additional £50 on top. This would total a huge £105, which made my eyes water a little. I also wanted to be able to use a clip to mount a phone onto a controller to use Game Pass. It seems like a lot to ask and spend, so I did some browsing on Amazon to see what goodies were on offer. That might work. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to discourage anyone from buying a fixture and a Pro Controller. I just like sharing some budget alternatives. After some online window shopping, I found a Bluetooth controller that worked on multiple platforms, including Android and Switch. It even came with a phone clip, so I was two thirds of the way there. After looking at the pictures and reviews, I realized it was very close to an official Pro Controller size and shape. So if I got a generic Switch clip, that was made for a Pro Controller, I could make some adjustments in order to make it fit this controller. For under £8, I thought it was worth a go at least. When the controller and switch mount arrived, I found the mount had a tiny bit of wiggle which would make the switch fall forwards if I held it at the wrong angle. Aside from that, it clipped to the controller perfectly. To fix the wiggle, I just grabbed some EVA craft foam I had cut the rough shape, then trace around the mount to get the right size and cut a hole for the charging port. I then stuck it down with double-sided tape so it wouldn't be permanent if I needed to take it off for any reason. And there! No more wiggle and stable as if it was made for the controller. And I still had access to all the buttons I needed. It had a fairly stiff bracket with three positions to adjust the screen angle and wasn't too cheap feeling considering the price. With that little project done, I turned to the controller itself. It was much better than I'd realized. And if you want a universal controller, I would highly recommend this. Not sponsored, just a happy customer. The face buttons have a good feel and a soft click. The D-pad isn't mushy and reminds me of a PS4 controller. There are two clicky back buttons for macros and buttons on the front for home, start or plus, select or minus, turbo, screenshots, and controller settings. On the back is a small switch to turn on macros and a button to sync with switch consoles and USB dongles. It's super easy to sync this controller. For Android, you need to hit Home and B to activate Bluetooth, while Apple devices connect with Home and A. Simple. Now, you might be thinking, the button layout is all wrong for Xbox games. And you would be right. Going into Fallout New Vegas, everything was backwards. But the controller has a setting which flips A and B and X and Y. Just hold the settings button and click in the right stick to change back and forth. So everything is in the right place except the letters on the buttons. This also works for the D-pad and left joystick. You can swap their functions. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the D-pad brings up different menus like customization or status effects, 
and the joystick controls movement. In the same way as the letter buttons, hold settings and click the right stick in. When you switch, the D-pad lets you move around and the joystick brings up menus. This will be good for games that don't always factor in the D-pad or joystick for movement or just to customize the controller to how you want to use it. I don't use macros, but they're super easy to program. Just turn the switch to on, hold the settings button and one of the back buttons. When the light flashes, you have 30 seconds to record whatever you want. If you don't want to use the back buttons, just flip the switch to off. There's a vibration strength setting, which can be adjusted by holding settings then up or down on the D-pad. And turbo settings that can be changed by holding settings and left or right on the D-pad. If you press the home button while the controller is connected to a phone or a switch, it'll wake it up, which is always a nice touch. And you don't have to pair it every time. It has gyro too, so the only thing you lose out on is NFC. It charges through USB-C and has a super long battery life of around 12 hours. I think I've only charged it three times since I got it, and the first time was because it was straight out the box. You can also use the USB-C port to connect the controller to a PC. So there you have it, a controller that's universal with most devices, an amount that was just under eight pounds. My total came to 34 pounds 16. The prices for these items might go up and down with sales and special offers. And there are loads of generic switch mounts you could try out if this one isn't available. With just a few tweaks here and there, I've got something I can use for whatever game console I feel like playing without sacrificing controller features or quality. And I save some pennies to boot, which is always a great feeling. watching and don't forget to hit your favorite combination of buttons down below